Oh, we started on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Hi there. Plugged on. Plugged on. Tyler, Key, Sam. Looking all Christmassy. Yeah. At least one of us is. Yeah. Hey, it's Christmassy. It's a pirate. It's Pirates green. of Christmas. There's no green in Christmas. I should have got winter. <clears throat> I, I should have got winter. What does that mean? <laughs> they're all different seasons. It's like they had, they had uh, four different, different shirts. shirts. Uh. They had four different shirts and they were... <clears throat> then what are you going to do in the summer? That's a good question. Yeah. We should, you should have got... We should have got all four of them. Yeah, and just wear one like shirt 20, every day like for every season. It was 20 bucks a piece, but I was like... Yeah. I was almost... I was really tempted. I'm like... Yeah. Just to get off of it. Like, was it a pirate? Yeah. It's a pirate riding. Well, yeah. in the back, it's a pirate riding a motorcycle. Yeah. I got it from the Harley Davidson thing on like some island in the Bahamas. I'm like, why not? Pirate riding a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's super over the top, and so it fits. Ah, uh, we're gonna do <laughs> that weird. Ah, uh, uh, we're gonna do the top ten songs of 2018. <clears throat> Our list is the only list that matters. Actually, yeah. my list is the only list that matters. But my list is the only list that matters. Mine doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you don't matter. I just want to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I think it's been a really great year for music, and there's a lot of very great stuff. It was hard to make this list for me. Um, so I, I, I think you and I have ten songs. You have five. Yes. So <coughs> without further ado... Let's get started. Why don't we run quickly, I guess, from 10 <clears throat> to 5. 6. And then, whatever. Yeah. yeah, you and I, then. All right. Good Sam. You did it. Go! Cool. Number 10. I have uh, Body Talks by The Struts. It's mm. like, <clears throat> that was this year? That was this year. That's, uh, or I mean, the album came out this year, so I'm also hmm. putting it in that thing. Yeah, this song's just super, super catchy. One of, uh, one of the catchiest rock songs I heard all year and uh i think what kind of sings it what it kind of sells it is the it's like the main riff and then it's the strats are just really good at kind of writing these like sort of like it almost it's a little bit almost like not not dad rock to the point of like greta van fleet but that kind of style and then having them be super catchy and it's just like a dirty song i also found out just randomly by accident there's like a version of the song where they sing with kesha hmm. i found it but because i played it by accident on my radio show, and I'm like, oh, would you look at that? I'm like, huh. But yeah, Body Talks, The Struts. Uh, my number 10, I have <clears throat> Bring Out the Monsters by Gamma Bomb. Uh, this is, you know, Gamma Bomb is not super popular, but this is a thrash jam for everybody, in my opinion. This song is so fucking fun. Has very, uh, reminds me of like King Diamond ish vocals during the chorus, and uh, just unbelievably catchy riffs. Uh, and it's just really, really uh, get your head banging with this one. I love it. Yeah. Number nine, I have Magic Spider by Ooh. Necro Galvacon. This song is so weird, and that's why I like it <clears throat> from, you know, you know, just the, the chorus with, like, the piano. It's like, you know, there's a magic spider, and it will spin its web for you and all kinds of other stuff. But it's just, it's a weirdly happy song. And it's just, I, lo- I love the instrumentation. Necrogalicon, I mean, this whole album is, I think, is really good with, like, just how they just kind of mix all kinds of styles together and yeah. whatnot. And I think that this is probably one of the one of the songs up there with, like, Killing Time and Space is, like, one of those, you know, it's like showcases just how decept, like, you would like, deceptively think they're, like, a joke band, but they're, like, really good songwriters. And so this songs really good because of things like that and number nine i have rats from ghost mm. um this is just a really great fucking song especially you know it starts off with the drums and then that riff kicks in it's like drop down there guitar sort of riff just because it's 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 a tight riff and uh it you know the chorus is what sells me every time that chorus is fucking catchy as shit uh, and will get stuck in your head all day <clears throat> i love the very chunky ending to this song and i really love the guitar solo the guitar solo is beautiful in a song and the way that they lead into it uh, it's just excellent with that guitar harmony it, it's like it's classic ghost at this point of like you know what their sound is and yeah uh, it's it's a song that i thoroughly enjoy 
Number eight, I have The Ringer from Eminem's Ooh. most recent album. It's, God, that is one of the best opening tracks to an album <coughs> I've heard in such a long time. And it's, you know, this album came out of nowhere because, you know, he put out Revival, which was not very well received. And then he just kind of puts out this album, which is basically one big uh, middle finger to everybody who complained about his last album and all the things that he's got going on with, like, it's like he's like not happy with like Tyler the Creator and Machine Gun Kelly and all kinds of people like that. But like this song is just hit the rhythm and the flow that he has the entire time, but also like how just sort of biting and critical it is of modern hip hop with like the he makes fun of mumble rappers and how like there's that super repetitive like sort of uh rapping style that a lot of people have that's sort of like uh I'm trying to think of like rappers do, I think Drake does it a lot. But like of just the mm-hmm. word after word after word, and, and I'm like, I love how he does that too because he does that flow, and he's all, and he's like saying, you know, how much he hates it. Yeah. At the same exact time, it's pretty. Cool. <laughs> and then he makes fun of Gucci Gang, which you can't go wrong with that because that's a yeah. dumb song. But man, yeah, this song. And that's also, a... it's just like the 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 beat is one of the best beats in like rap I've heard in like such Ooh. a long time. Just so laid back. But it just fits perfectly. It's yeah. just you just can't help it. It's a head bobber for sure. <clears throat> I love that fucking song. Um, catchiest song I heard of, heard this year for sure. Um, the, the thing that I he says like ridiculous shit, and that's in that song like jam a crest white strip in the tip of my dick with an ice pick. I'm gonna take my ball sack and flick it like a light switch. It's like <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I, I like that stuff. Um, yeah, I at number eight I have "Raised the Dead" by Light the Torch. Light the Torch, formerly Devil, you know Howard Jones's band um, that changed their name. And you know this album is pretty damn good. But this is a song to me that that gets me every time. The main riff is crunchy; it's in your face, and then the chorus is just fucking on point. Um, Howard Jones's vocals are fantastic. The background vocals there are great. The middle. Middle section has uh, very awesome vocals there as well, leading into an incredible solo from Fran- Francesco, I believe his name is. Uh, that's just very well done. The whole song is just fucking beautiful. I don't. It's one of the songs that I listen to it at least, and I go, I don't understand why this is like not the most popular like the Torch song because it's so good. But yeah. Number seven, I have uh, Kai Tangata from Alien Weaponry's. Uh, debut album mm. I yeah. really like this song I think because you know they're th- New Zealand thrash metal but I think the thing that, that I like the most is sort of the how polarizing the vocals are during the verse and the chorus like the vocals when it's like the screamed more uh, aggressive style is very percussive nature to it and then yet it's the super kind of cool clean vocals during the chorus it's just it's a it's a simpler song but I think that's kind of what like sells it for me because I love the chorus. I think the chorus is super catchy, especially with the riffs. And then the middle section is just... <clears throat> I don't know. The middle section is just one of those riffs. It's, like, it's not the most mm-hmm. m- you know, mind-blowing thing, but it just puts a smile on my face. And I'm just like, ah, oh, this is a good... Riff. This band... Uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a good it's a good song from a good from a fairly fairly good uh, debut album for a band. Not the best thing ever, but it's good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, number seven, I have Survivalist from Unearth. Do you remember Unearth? Yeah. yeah. Did they get a new uh, <laughs> singer? No. The same guy. They still have oh, the same it guy. A lot different now. I think um, <clears throat> what's his name? DL. Is that what they called him from the Casey Strain? Dick Long? Or, yeah. I don't know. Early Casey Strain yeah, albums. Yeah. He's I think. like writing for Unearth now. Ah, uh, that makes a lot and of sense. This song punches so fucking hard. It is just so heavy. And it, it starts off, um, you know, with a real banger of a, a old school sort of metalcore or <clears throat> circle pit sort of riff very fast. And then it gets to this breakdown. And this, it, it's just my favorite part of And one of my favorite things I've heard in a song this year of... You know, the singer's going, like, have I become just another fading memory? And as he's just screaming his face off, the breakdown comes in. It's fucking heavy as shit. Just throw down. It's awesome. You know? It, it's the one time that I would maybe get in the pit. Mm. 
I got this, <coughs> I got in a in a karate pit one time. One time. Yeah, we're, we're too old for that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> they knocked yeah. me out. I would just want in while my bones would break. It's as close that. as I would get to the pit. Maybe I would stand on the edge. <laughs> yeah. Be like Chuck Liddell. <laughs> But the whole song's really good, and then it also has this like melodic section that feels very like old school, two thousand four metalcore sort of stuff, and it's fantastic. Number six, uh, I have uh, Bart's Bell from Mm. Behemoth. I uh, I really like this song. It's just, I mean, it's the the intro, which is like I I love, especially once the drums kind of come in, how epic that intro gets. But I mean, and it's the chorus. It's just a super catchy song, and I, yeah. I just really like it. This was probably the first, I mean, besides uh, Aura Pro Nubis Lucifer, this was probably one of the first Behemoth songs I actually really got into. And I just think it's it's catchy. I like the, again, the sort of the, the the changing dynamics from, you know, the the, the vocals during the verses, and that's kind of, and also that goes, uh, it's like half the, half the chorus and then the clean vocals which sounds super like almost like church sounding in some ways which is like I think sells it man but Satan but Satan <laughs> but, but much Satan yeah so uh, yeah I mean the song is just epic as hell and that's kind of a lot of things if it's epic I, I love it so uh, number six I have the lament from Tribulation uh, Tribulation you know they have a lot of black metal, black metal elements to them they they're filling like this agaloc hole that is <clears throat> there now that they're gone fill my agaloc yeah. hole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but i mean this song starts off with one of my favorite fucking riffs uh, in, in the way that it starts, just the guitar just kind of one of the lead guitars just comes in with this little like lick sort of thing, and then the riff just comes in. The whole band is there. It's just the way it starts is a very powerful beginning, uh, and then there's also just some very great, more melodic moments to it. The vocals are fantastic throughout the whole thing. It's got a lot of just great atmosphere and energy to it, and I, I really fucking love the song. We're five. Number five, I have uh, Velospa by Wardruna. It's a band that... Um, Speak they, English, please! They, they, it's from uh, <laughs> Norway. They do, like... Um, they use instruments, like, from the Viking Age, mm. pretty much. Um, <clears throat> or at least instruments based on what they think was, like, in the Viking Age and before, and around that time period. Uh, this album is... It's, it's from the album Scald, which is entirely, like, a Skaldic... Wait a so minute. it's all acoustic. I've heard. I think I've. Yeah. I think I've. I think it's I've all acoustic. This one, yeah. Um, it's like a an excerpt from the Valuspa, which is like the creation of the world, sort of. But it's really nice. It's really soothing to me. Uh, like I said, it's all. Um, I just said we're acoustic. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a really nice, relaxing song. I think it's uh it stands out I think to me in sort of the world of music now which is sort of like why I only picked five songs because I could probably could come up with like ten that I really like but I thought there were five that really stood out to me this year that I liked there was sort of a cut above the rest and I could look at it and say this is what I really liked without overlapping too much and say like yeah this is a star song to me <clears throat> check it out uh, my uh, for number five I have Message in the Amber by Amorphous. Um, this song's really great, and it starts off with a very kind of happy sort of folk intro with a lot of energy to it. Um, that ends up being the chorus rhythms as well. But uh, and the chorus is very well done. It to me it, the part that gets me every time is the middle section of the song. So they have like this slower uh, section right before it, but then it gets to it. And it's just this crunchy breakdown sort of rhythm with these gigantic operatic vocals going in the background, and it's just it's thunderous. Like it's just one of those crank it up moments every time it, it, it comes on, and then it you know gets back to the chorus, which is very well done. It's it's a beautiful beautiful song. Number five, I have uh, Become the Storm from D. Snyder's <coughs> new album. Yeah. I, I debated back and forth because I was I was really close to putting uh, Dead Hearts mm. on this one because that song is also really good. I mean, that would probably definitely be like my number 11 at this point on this list. But like, the song is just 
super catchy and crunchy. I mean, the chorus is probably maybe up there with like rats is one of the catchiest choruses of like the entire year. Mm-hmm. That chorus just gets stuck all the time and it, it, the song has it just has like a nice crunch to it i love the solo and I, and uh, when they come back to the chorus towards the end when it's like all slowed down yeah. and, and it's just the riff i'm like that's my favorite part. oh this is, it's so good it's you know d snyder's metal again and that's great yeah and, and, that's, and that's a great thing to say in 2018 and he sounds so good yeah. for his age it's just crazy um yeah number four from here uh, number four, I had Royal Beggars by the band Architects. Um, lyrically, I think this song really stands out to me uh, in a big way because it, it sort of talks about how this sort of people are different now. They sort of lost their way. You know, they don't pay attention as much as they used to. They sort of um, don't care as much as they used to. And at least, you know, in my day to day life, I notice that a lot more with just where I work and everything. And, um, you know, so that really stands out to me as something I can really relate to. Um, instrumentally, it's a really good song. Uh, it's really heavy. You know, there are a couple key parts that stand out to me. The chorus, uh, it, it comes in. It's very, like, um, it just hits you right away. It's, like, emotionally driven. Um, there's a good breakdown at the end. Uh, I think the song is just a really good, complete song to me. I was this close to putting <clears throat> here after on my list. Oh yeah, that's a good that's, song that's too. Song's yeah, fucking incredible. That, that whole mm-hmm. album's pretty damn good. I need to listen to it more. Um, at number four, I had "Fen of Shadows" by Skeleton Witch. Oh, yeah, another probably honorable mention on my list. Oh my god, I love this song. Uh, to you know, the, the song it it has this extremely atmospheric and epic nature to it. Like it takes. The newer side of Skeleton Witch, which brings in a lot more black metal elements to it, but then it mixes it with that just crunchy, blackened style of thrash that they were, and throws them together. And every time that verse riff comes on, and, you know, oh, and they're so... screaming like the Watchers, and it's just that might be the best riff of the year. It's that, that, so that's fucking heavy, and in in the transition to it's just like that. You know, they don't do anything special to lead up to it. It's just bam, right there it is, and. <laughs> It's it's fucking awesome, and then you know I like the the slower sections to it. I love everything about this song, and, and especially like the build ups. Uh, I guess right before that crunchy, you know, trots on the guitar, uh, the build up to it, you know, it's just fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, the singer's just screaming over top of it. It's like god damn, it's just phenomenal. It's it. This is skeleton witch. At their absolute best they've ever been, in, in my opinion. Yeah, there was there was uh, there was another song from that album that like really I was was another probably close to honorable mention. That's the uh, uh, the vault. The vault is really good. It's really good. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah, but it's like they they this is a great example of a band evolving without <clears throat> ditching who they were. Yeah, sometime. they just totally took their sound to the next level. Yeah. yeah. Number four, I uh, I have rats as well by mm. Ghost. So a lot of things that Tyler said. I think again, this is the chorus is probably the one of the catchiest things of this year. It, so much so that it became probably because I, I jammed this song so frequently when it first got released. It's in my top five listen to songs of this year. Mm. So I mean, <clears throat> uh, it's just great. I mean, the riff. Uh, I'm not going to hound on too much, but like, yeah, the solos, it's just everything. It's basically Ghost at Ghost's Finest, so yeah. yeah. Rats is a great song. Number three? Mm-hmm. three. Uh, number three, my number three was Vultures by Northlane. Uh, just a random song released out of nowhere. Not to promote an upcoming album or anything, which I actually really like. I wish bands did that more. They would have an album, maybe just like one song in between just to hold you over. Uh, I think the song may have been sort of left over from their last album. It just didn't make it on or whatever. They thought it was good enough um, to release on its own. I think it definitely was. Um, I like how, in a way, chaotic and... It, 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 the, the song just feels chaotic. It doesn't feel like it 
goes along with most of the song structure or formula that they use for Mesmer, which a lot of the songs were like, okay, it's a verse and a really good chorus, and then here's this part and that part. The song really comes at you from all angles. Um, one of my favorite things uh, about it is that it's really shown how far they've come as a band from uh, losing their last uh, singer, putting out an album in no that I thought was a little underwhelming. It was sort of a maybe a growing experience for them, putting out Mesber being really good, and put it which was heavy in ways, but then Vultures comes out and it's probably the heaviest song they put out since uh, since their last singer. But um, yeah, I, I love seeing how much the band has grown over the years. Um, really, really heavy. It's sneakily heavy in some parts. That it's not just a riff under a certain part. It's just extremely heavy, and it, it, it's it's a really nice song. <clears throat> uh, my number three, I have sharpened the guillotine by An uh, Angelus Apachita, uh, which is a Spanish thrash metal band. Oh my goodness. Um, from the very epic intro to the best circle pit thrash riff maybe of all time <laughs> to the fucking incredible chorus, this song just nails it on all fronts. I mean, the the vocals are very catchy during the chorus, um, and then you know the the lead guitar that's going over top of it's just fucking awesome. Uh, but then also just that balls out in your face riff, you know that kind of opens it up after the acoustic intro just so fucking good i mean it's it's like everything i want in a thrash song because that those verses every time you know that comes in it's just thrash goodness right there so. yeah uh my number three i have uh nail by mouth by hawken it's the instrumental track they put on their most recent album vector i just love uh everything about this song from like because mm -hmm. you know this album by itself is also a much heavier album than a lot of Hawkins other stuff but like I love a lot of the riffs uh, in this song from the opening one that they kind of bust in and then there's like the, the main riff which is, is like it's such a weird time signature that I like and there's you know cool solos and the, my favorite part is like one of the the weird I, I don't even know how to describe the sound effect that they use but it's like they use like some you know uh, electronic mm. and, then, and then the riff kind of comes in that kind of sounds like that and I'm like Oh, it's, so good. it's just the song does not stop for seven minutes, and I think that's kind of the the great thing is that like it just flows naturally from one section to the next, and it's just awesome. It's I, I feel like it's just unbridled musical creativity. Yeah, they kind of just they just put out. So I love that they came out with a heavier side. So I feel like their last album, <clears throat> and then even the mountain at times, you know, was more on the softer, more melodic yeah. side. And this is just like. Pfft. It's like yeah, let's just yeah, yeah sure. There's some there's some melodic face. songs, but let's just let's just bust yeah. out with it. Uh, my number two is the song Juniper by the band or artist, I guess Mirka, yeah. which is another case of releasing a song randomly. Which again, I really like. Wish every band did it. Um, just a random single that popped up. I remember the first time I listened to the song. It has an amazing chorus, in my opinion. I, I really love the chorus. Uh, each verse is very subtle, I guess. The first time I listened to it, I thought, like, okay, chorus is amazing, but it's kind of just the song. And then I listened to it again, I listened to it again. I started liking it a little bit more and more, and then I found it just throughout the day, it would sort of get stuck in my head, and it's sort of, I've really grown to really, really love the song. I think um, <clears throat> it kind of goes to show that the song doesn't have to be like the best or it doesn't have to check off every box. It can just be sort of just a song that you really like. The chorus I think is great. The way it goes from the verse into a chorus is just like really uh, just effortless, I guess. Um, it's just before you know it, it's just the chorus is really catchy and then after the chorus is this sort of like heavy part where the rest of the song is like string instruments and stuff and then the, like after the chorus it's like electric guitar and drums uh singing is great um yeah yeah say? I I have a really good it. song yeah i listened to it the other day i thought it was yeah great. very like <clears throat> atmospheric <clears throat> yeah uh my number two i have rising <clears throat> from ruin 
by Judas Priest. Mm. Uh, it was either this or <clears throat> Lightning Strikes for me. <laughs> we'll get um, to the second, but yeah. But to me, you know, uh, listening to the two, Rising from Ruin is the song that just gets me the most fired up the most because of its just, it's a massive <clears throat> hook of a chorus. Uh, the I love the little tiny guitar solo in the beginning. The the main riff is fucking sexy. Uh, the the uh, you know Rob Halford sounds fantastic during the verses, which are a lot slower and softer. And then it's just bam with that just big chorus and everything. But then you know the guitar solo in this song is by far my favorite solo of the year, and. It leads into this incredible guitar harmony that's just... It, it, it's one of those things where... And I saw Judas Priest has been playing this on their most recent tour, which I think is fantastic because it's one of those moments where at a live show with like five to 10,000 people around, that would be like an incredible moment to, to, to hear is that guitar harmony. And it's just... I hope this is a song Judas Priest keeps playing for rest of their career <clears throat> who knows because i know it's not the most popular one off their new album but damn is it tight it's good yeah uh mine's lightning strikes mm. from judas priest album i think that just because this song just hits so well you know from like the main riff which is super catchy and you know rob halford his uh is you know vocals incredible in that part but then like the chorus is so kind of simple but like so effective and i think that's the thing that kind of it, they kind of really i think the song does really well where it's very straightforward and it just kind of gets its point across and it's just aggressive and it's you know uh the heavy priest and it's like part of one of the reasons this album is i'd put this up there with anything from classic priest is, yeah uh, being a great priest album and this song is 100 percent why the chorus gets like stuck in my head all the time and like everything about the song is just great i i again rising from ruin is probably like another song where i was like oof, that's a i could have i could have almost put this song here but like yeah lightning strikes to me is just like again it showed up in like <clears throat> my top 10 <coughs> songs of this year because mm -hmm. again i'm just like wow and it just great. jammed it a lot so yeah my number one is from a band that we used to listen to i listened to in many many years i saw they had a new album coming out this year I would listen to their album. I haven't listened to them since their album, Deep Blue. Oh, shit. Parkway Drive. The oh, Void shit. is such yes. a good song. Um, mainly based on the, the main riff. Yes. It hits so hard. I love that they can go from that, like such a hard-hitting riff, into a chorus and not lose any momentum with the song and then go back into the next verse and just keep it going. The song really stays at like a high pace the entire time. Chorus is really, really good. <clears throat> I could have chosen a number of songs. Or I could have picked a number of songs from this album. I really like the entire album. Yeah. Uh, Wishing Wells, I think, is a really good song. Kronos, uh, Cemetery Bloom is like a different style song from them. Um, I really... It's weird coming back to this band after having not listened to them for so long. And in a way, just in my mind, they always sort of were I guess labeled as sort of like this metalcore band that was just metalcore and you know going back and listen to a couple of their other albums over the years and it's still to me it's always like yeah it's Parkway Drive but they never really got to that next level yeah that they got to with this album they they did something that's really hard for a lot of bands to do is that they they didn't overextend like they didn't reach on something and and miss with like going with a new sound or um <clears throat> including a couple new different uh, inspirations or uh, styles to their music, trying some new things out. It, it fit them perfectly. It felt like it, it's what they should be doing, that the, what they should have been doing all along. Uh, just such a great album, great song. Um, yeah, to me, this is like their, their album that yeah, I and, really and love. This band's <clears throat> really, with this album, and they've kind of gotten you know, a lot yeah, more popular yeah. off of it. But in on the flip side, like all the comments I see about this album from Parkway Drive fans is they hate it. 
Uh, like because they're doing different stuff. I'm like, yeah, what? yeah. I, I mean, it's fine to me. I, yeah, I've enjoyed it, and especially the void is like, yeah, the, the pinnacle of that album. Because I was listening to it one day in, in the car. I was like, it's this fucking yeah, riff, man. It's a really good and song. It was like a turning thing, and I was supposed to stay in my lane. And you didn't. And I started <laughs> drifting over a little bit because I was too deep into the song. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a hell of a song. Um, my number one, I have the Silent Life by Rivers of Nile. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this this song is just perfection from start to finish. I, I like its you know its intro is it's I get why it's there. You can kind of throw it away, but it also gives more purpose to the main riff. That that build up to the main riff, which is very simplistic, but just chunky as hell. You know, the whole time when the drums are building up, it's just it, it, it you're getting ready, and then the whole band kicks in. It's just bam, a gut punch to the fucking nuts, and then the atmosphere comes in. The vocals are fucking fantastic on the song. The lyrics are incredible. Um, you know, the the chorus is really tight as well, with some very kind of weird and chunky riffage. But then it's the it's this the core of this song, that's the best part of it because you have, because they totally changed the style of it, and to this very slower, more atmospheric sort of thing. They bring in saxophone. There's an incredible guitar solo in it, and it's just. You know that sort of thing with this style of band is so new to me, and it's so refreshing to hear a band like that just go fuck it and just do whatever they want. Like we don't have to just be this technical death metal band forever. We can bring in a saxophone, and you know later they have <clears throat> some very fantastic clean vocals and on a track, and it's like they can kind of be who they want, and they really did that on this album. This song, you know, really really is the pinnacle of that to me and not only after you know the saxophone section and the guitar solo it's like then they just come back with one of the heaviest fucking sections on the whole album just like it probably like seven seven or eight string guitars it's just boom boom to go to go to go it's like gent sort of shit it's tight i love it the, the whole song is just six minutes of pure metal bliss my number one is uh, Crimson Bow and Arrow Ooh. from the Epic Across uh, <clears throat> Attack on Titan EP. Uh, yeah, I, and before, cause I don't mean, somebody might say, before somebody says, yeah, this album came out in Japan in December of last year. It didn't get put out until for everybody until like July. I mean, Epic is already like probably up there as one of my favorite bands because they kind of just do everything that I like in metal and in music. But like, I think the thing about this song is. You know, it's it's a cover of like an and from a song from an anime, from like uh, the theme of like one of the move from one of the Attack on Titan movies, and you know, anime is very over the top, and this song is just super over the top from yeah. the overly, overly dramatic and epic intro to just you know, you know, Epica is you know typical just like fast drums, fast guitars with orchestration in the background. Simone Simmons giving, you know. <clears throat> She, you know, her voice is always incredible, and the chorus gets stuck in my head so often. I mean, I like the song enough that I, as I showed these guys before, and I used it for like my final project, and mm. where I had to make a oh, light show. Okay. And so I'm like, yeah, and I just <coughs> kind of went nuts with the lights. I'm like, I gotta do, I gotta do this song justice. And I mean, everything about the song is just like awesome. It's just, yeah, again, like I said, it's just so over the top, but it's just, I love it. From, you know, just the. The heavy orchestration to super heavy guitars. Probably my favorite. Somehow, even though it's like my favorite part of the song is the second verse mm -hmm. when everything just strips away and it's just the the voice and like the growl vocals. I'm like, yes, yeah. this is so it's good. Good. Oh, I love Epica and I love that this would, song. This song would make a hell of a like opening uh, song at an Epica <clears throat> show. Yeah. Just with that intro, it's like, yeah. Oh, they need to come around again before they put out their next album. Yeah. So, so they can do that. I mean, they'll it's probably still song. play this song. I mean, they play stuff like that all the time. They cover the fucking Spider-Man theme from the mm -hmm. Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies occasionally live. That's, like, yeah. awesome. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a few really quick shout-outs. Not going to say too much about them. D. Snyder with Become the Storm was my number 11. I almost threw that on. 
Um, Steel, uh, Steel and Silver, Visigoth. Yeah. Is a great song. Uh, Mighty Brave and Dark from Immortals, fucking awesome. One of the most epic black metal songs you can listen to. Jonathan Davis with What It Is. Have you heard that? It's on, it's on the radio. I think, I it's I a yet. super catchy song. I, I, I like it. There's not a whole lot to it, but it's just really catchy. Um, uh, Alice in Chains with All I Am, I think it's great. Revocation of of, uh, of Unworldly Origin. It's just fucking awesome. And Behemoth with Bart's and Bell. Those songs that most all name it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> a couple of mine would be uh, Outlive Them All. Visigoth, yeah, that cool. a fan of a lot of songs, a lot of songs you had. Fan of Shadows would have definitely been one. Um, uh, Age of Reason, Greta Van Fleet was really close to making it on my list. Um, oh, there was a couple other ones, and I'm gonna kick myself. Are for you ready? Them. From Disturbed. Yeah, it's the <clears throat> songs. I'm just uh, <clears throat> behind the mask from Machine Head <clears throat> album. Yeah, is really good. It's like the only that good song good from song. the album. Uh yeah, this is a lot of good shit. The new Ice Cube album. Just kidding, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. I haven't listened to it. Yeah, so I, I think it, I think it's album. not exactly. I think it's not very good. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> Let us know what your favorite songs of the year were. Thanks for watching. Hit that big square, baby.